Hi, I was a math ambassador at You at Waterloo Day, and I realized so many of you have the exact same questions. So hopefully I can answer some of them in this video. This is the agenda for today's video, and feel free to click to the timestamp that you're interested in. So without further ado, let's get into the questions. First, let's talk about your course schedule as a Waterloo computer science student. I'm going to focus on what you're going to have in first year. So in first year, you're going to have two math courses and one computer science course. Your math courses are three times a week, one hour per lecture, and your computer science courses are twice a week with one and a half hour per lecture. Here is a rough diagram I made of your first and second term schedule. You're going to have space for two electives, which is pretty nice, but two of them will have to be comps courses. I've attached a link here that shows you the comps courses that you can take to fulfill your degree requirements. A lot of students were asking about the start times for the classes. The earliest classes start at 8.30, and the latest classes that I've seen for math start at 4.30 and end at 5.20, and the latest classes I've seen for CS start at 2.30 and end at 3.50. For more information on courses, I'd highly recommend checking UW Flow. It's a great resource that a lot of Waterloo students rely on for picking courses and for checking course times and course offerings. Waterloo is pretty different from other universities in that it's not first come first serve for our course selection. We have about a week window where we can select our courses and then Waterloo will arrange our courses for us and send us our schedule. If you're not happy with what your schedule looks like, for example, if you have a lot of 830s and you're not a morning person, you can opt to swap your courses during the ad drop period, which is around the first week of the semester. And I'll attach a link below that guides you to the Waterloo website, which will give you more information on the ad drop period. So what are advanced courses and what do they teach? So I didn't take any advanced courses, but they are something that Waterloo offers for the math and computer science courses. And since I don't have much experience with them, I'll link some inform information that I found on the Waterloo website. Just so you know, most students who take the advanced courses end up dropping to the regular courses because there's no real benefit to them besides if you're actually really interested in the content. So if you're very interested in math and CS and you've received an offer to join the advanced class, I would highly recommend checking them out because you can always drop down. Next, let's talk about sequences. So many of you were asking which sequence is the best, uh, which sequence is most common. From my experience, sequence one is definitely the most popular. Most people that you'll meet in first year, your friends, will probably be in sequence one. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, this is a chart of the sequences for math. I would say if you don't have that much experience with computer science, maybe consider sequence four since you would have three study terms to start with before you have to worry about co-op. But that being said, I went into computer science with no coding knowledge at all and I started with sequence three. And in the end, I ended up switching to sequence one since I found a co-op. So sequences are actually pretty flexible. After your first co-op, you can pretty much switch um, between study and work as you wish. You could just have to complete a form that allows you to switch. But that being said, I will say sequence three is definitely the least popular sequence. And of course, everyone's on that Waterloo grind. So many are hesitant to take a summer off. Here are some examples of people who don't really like sequence three. Yeah, if you want an off term, definitely sequence three is the one to go with because all the other ones, you're just going to be studying and working for the next five years with no break. Okay, next let's talk about the question that everyone asks, how hard is it to find a first co-op? I think pretty much everyone I talk to asks this question. This really depends and it depends on honestly, your skill, what you bring to the table. I know people in first year who found amazing co-ops, who got co-ops that are better than some fourth years or fifth years or even some graduates. I also know people who didn't find a co-op who ended up doing We Accelerate, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with doing We Accelerate. So many of my friends did the program and in their second co-op, they found great co-ops, which were even better than people who were employed in their first co-op. So that's nothing to worry about. And with We Accelerate, you get your co-op credit, you don't have to worry about that. 
But yeah, it just really depends on what you bring to the table. Do you have a lot of coding knowledge? Do you have projects on your resume? When it comes down to co-ops, projects and work experience is what's going to get you the job. It's not really going to be your marks. Some companies are going to look at your first year marks, but it's really the projects that can make a candidate stand out. Overall, for first year, I know a lot of people who got their jobs through referrals, got their jobs through Waterloo Works, some got their jobs externally, but if you want to get a job, I would just say start coding now, get some projects on your resume. Social life! So, Waterloo's infamous for this. Um, there's really not much to say here. It depends. What do, you de what do you define as a social life? If your idea of a social life is partying every weekend, I would say maybe don't choose Waterloo. But if you're completely fine with just studying with your friends, going to the library with your friends, um, and then getting food and going to club events, if that's your idea of a social life, then yes, there is a social life at Waterloo. So it really depends on who you are as a person. Are there parties at Waterloo? Yeah, I, sure. But compared to schools like Western or Queens, definitely not. You cannot compare. Waterloo is heavy on the grind culture. And honestly, with the workload of your assignments from being a computer science student, I don't think you have much time to party. <laughs> but that being said, let's go into clubs because Waterloo Computer Science actually has so many clubs and these clubs have amazing networks and connections that you can take advantage of. So I'm just going to list out some clubs that I've attended events for and hopefully that will give you an idea of what's available at Waterloo. There's Data Science Club, Computer Science Club, Woman in Computer Science, Woman in Math, math sock and that's just the clubs within the math faculty there's so many clubs outside of math that i'm not gonna get into because that would take forever but since you guys are in computer science you will probably also be interested in hackathons just within waterloo we have hack the north technova which is waterloo's woman targeted hackathon which i'm a part of geese hacks hawk hacks which is laurier's hackathon and so many hackathons outside of Waterloo that you can also attend. There's also design teams, which if you haven't heard of, it's basically groups of people working on projects. Some more popular ones include Watt AI, UW Blueprint, UW Reality Labs, Watt Street, Waterlink, and Watonomous. But there's many more beyond that. Those are just the ones that I've heard of. And of course, there are social clubs here as well. Uh, some popular ones include CSA, VSA, and FSA, and a lot more. So there are ways to get involved, and there's so many great resources for you to take advantage of and ways for you to meet new people and make friends. A couple of you were also asking about the finances and tuition. When do you need to pay? So I'm not sure what it will be like for your year, but for my year, we had our bill available in late July and it was due mid to late August for first term. And for second term, it was available in mid-November and it was due mid-December. Okay, next let's address the rumors of Waterloo Computer Science because there's a few of them and many of them are true. So first, does it actually smell bad? Yes, it does. <laughs> um, the smell of the classroom is one of the two reasons why I stopped going to class in my second term of computer science. It, I just couldn't really take it, so I just stopped going. It was also because it was winter term and it was really cold. Um, so don't follow in my footsteps, but that is something to be aware of. It would be great if you guys, the incoming class, showered, showered and used deodorant. Yeah, I think they had to make a post about it, so yes, it is real. Next, let's talk about the gender ratio. In my year, the gender ratio is 24% girls. Um, obviously, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I will say it really just depends on the classroom. In first year, it's not too bad because you're with the entire math faculty since all the first year courses are general. In math, the gender ratio is much better. But as you go up your years, um, you'll realize that the girls will leave the class and you'll be in a class of 80 people and there will be like five girls. So 
yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> okay, next I want to talk about the Callier bust culture. So this is definitely something very relevant to Waterloo. I think most people that I know are aiming for the States and they would probably be pretty disappointed if they didn't end up there when they graduated. But that being said, there's still a fair amount of people who would be completely content remaining in Canada and are not like cal your bust. Finally, I'm going to give some last thoughts on how you can prepare this summer. So a lot of people were asking me about how to prepare for coursework. People were asking me about what they what we learned in first year. But honestly, I think that the best thing you can do this summer is get projects on your resume. If you're coming to Waterloo, you're probably coming because you really care about getting a job. Because that's what Waterloo does for you. And coursework, honestly, in computer science, it doesn't matter that much. As long as you're passing your courses, if you're not aiming for grad school or exchange, it doesn't really matter. So my advice, don't prepare for coursework. Honestly, I don't even know how you would prepare for coursework since the way they teach is so different than what you learn in high school. So I would recommend if you don't know how to code, get some coding experience, enroll in an online boot camp, watch some YouTube tutorials, do whatever you can just to start coding. If you do know how to code, try and see if you can get some formal experience. It doesn't have to be an internship, but if you can find like an organization who doesn't have a website and you can code that for them, that would be amazing to add to your resume. A lot of your high school clubs, it would be best to remove and make way for actual experiences that are relevant to coding. Another thing, start networking. If you have any connections, your parents' friends, your friends' parents, or just some random person you met who's somewhat in the tech field, Make sure that you do whatever you can to learn more about what they're doing and see if it's something you're interested in because you also never know how valuable that connection could be in the future. It could be what brings you your first co-op. And one last tip for anyone who's really desperate to land their first co-op, start LeetCode. I mean, you've probably heard it if you're already on the grind, but for those of you who don't know, a lot of software jobs have a coding assessment that you have to complete to even be qualified for an interview, and LeetCode prepares you for that. Uh, a great resource is NeatCode, which has video explanations for um, most LeetCode questions, so I would highly recommend checking that out. If you were asking for my honest opinion, I would say just to enjoy your summer, uh, spend time with your friends, go on vacation, do whatever you can because this is pretty much your last few months of free time where you have no other responsibilities. The next five years, you're going to be alternating between work and study every four months. So, you know, enjoy this last summer that you have. That's all for this video. Hopefully I answered some of your guys' questions, but if you have more, feel free to comment and I'll try my best to answer all of them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! <laughs>